Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, beautiful people. How is everybody doing? So we are continuing in the book of Genesis. Today we're reading from Genesis chapters 25 and 26. And before we begin reading, I will start it off with a prayer. So Father God, thank you for allowing us to gather today to read your word, Lord Jesus. Allow it to resonate with us internally, externally, Father God. Allow it to be on our hearts, on our minds, on our tongues always, and allow the seed to be planted, Lord Jesus. We know this life is full of stresses and distractions, Father God. So as we continue our daily lives and going through living in this world, Lord Jesus, I pray that we never fall from your word. I pray that we never stray away, no longer stray away from your word, no longer stray away from your presence, and no longer stray away from your from your grace, your love, your mercy, Lord Jesus. So bless us and keep us. May we have a wonderful and blessed day. Guide us in the word. Lead us, Holy Spirit, in the revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. So Genesis chapter 25. Abraham had taken another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Joshin, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shayu. Joshin was the father of Sheba and Dedan. The descendants of Dedan were the Asherites, the Letrites, and Leomites. The sons of Midian were Epha, Epher, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All these were descendants of Keturah. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac, but while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Abraham lived a hundred and seventy-five years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre in the field of Ephraim, son of Zahor the Hittite, the field Abraham had brought from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who then lived near Berlahora. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son Ishmael, whom Sarah's slave Hagar the Egyptian bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael listed in the order of their birth. Nebiot, the firstborn of Ishmael, Kedar, Adbil, Misham, Mishma, Duma, Massa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Nafish, and Kadima. These were the sons of Ishmael, and these were, and these are the names of the twelve tribal rulers according to their settlements and camps. Ishmael lived a hundred and thirty-seven years. He breathed his last and died, and he was gathered to his people. His descendants settled in the area from Havila to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt, as you go toward Asher, and they lived in hostility toward all the tribes related to them. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean from Padan Aram and sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her and she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, the two nations are in your womb excuse me, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first 
to come out was red and his whole body was like a hairy garment so they named him Eshu. After this his brother came out with his hand grasping Eshu's heel so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up and Eshu became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Eshu, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Eshu came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was also called Edom. Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Eshu said. What good is it? What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob says, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Eshu some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Eshu despised his birthright. Genesis chapter 26. Now there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philist Philistines, and Gerer. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees and my instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerer. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca. He thought the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca because she is beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the men might well have slept with your wife and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people Anyone who harms this man or his wife shall, shall surely be put to death. Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold, because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerer, where he settled. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died. And he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herders of Gerer quarreled with those of Isaac and said, The water is ours. So he named the well Ezek because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. He named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in this land. From there, he went up to Beersheba. That night, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant, Abraham. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. Meanwhile, Ab Abimelech, 
had come to him from Gerar with Ahuzat, his personal advisor, and Philco, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, Why have you come to me, since you were hostile to me and sent me away? They answered, We saw clearly that the Lord was with you, so we said, There ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you, that you would do us no harm, just as we did not harm you, but always treated you well and sent you away peacefully. And now you are blessed by the Lord. Isaac then made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning the men swore on oath to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they went away peacefully. That day Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug. They said, We found water. He called it Sheba. And to this day the name of the town has been Beersheba. Okay. And that completes, that finishes Genesis chapters 25 and 26. And so I hope you are continuing to study, continuing to read the word. I know for me, when I read it, aside from, you know, me becoming educated and having more knowledge about the faith, it also helps me to helps me in my obedience in my discipline you know because as I read through the words and uh, for example obviously Abraham was was very faithful to God you know he walked faithfully with God and always obeyed his instruction his commands his decrees so it is a um, an example to follow you know obviously of course naturally you know we follow Jesus but just as you know for in the human context, you know, for us to look up to another human being, um, yeah, that, you know, that it helps me in that manner. And so however the word helps you, you know, I, I know that, you know, you're reading it and the Holy Spirit, you know, will allow it to, to tailor to you and your life in the area that's, um, the area that's, that's needed for you, you know, with what you're experiencing and what you're going through. So, but nonetheless, before I end, I will close it out in prayer. So, Father God, thank you again for allowing us to gather today, allowing us to witness this day. Lord Jesus, every day is a gift that you bless us. So, uh, thank you for allowing us to witness this day. And I pray that we continue to acknowledge you in all that we do. I pray that we continue to fulfill your will to do your works father god allow us to be obedient to be disciplined in your word lord jesus allow allow us to commit to you more and more and commit to the faith and just grow stronger stronger in your word lord jesus as we are being taught how to how to follow you as we are being taught how to be who you want us to be be who you called us to be lord jesus so I, I thank you for this opportunity lord jesus and may we stay devoted to you devoted to reading and growing in the word lord jesus and may we be kept in this day father god allow us to see tomorrow and many more days ahead so that we can glorify your name and no longer take these days for granted lord jesus because you did not have to allow us to see these days so i pray that we all have the tenacity and the determination the motivation to truly serve you lord jesus for our households to truly serve you and worship you inwardly and outwardly father god and the stresses and the the chaos what we're going through personally in life lord jesus allow us to rise above that and continue to set our eyes on you to set our eyes on jesus father god allow us to to not be distracted to not be pulled down into this wicked world lord jesus and just to continue to to always seek your face no matter how hard it gets no matter how blurry the vision gets for us lord jesus no matter how dark the the tunnels are in our life lord jesus allow us to always see your light to seek your face your glory in your kingdom in jesus name i pray amen so y'all have a wonderful day i love y'all and most importantly god loves you